Well, the Conservative MP and leading Brexiteer Mark Francois joins us from Rayleigh in Essex. Many thanks for joining us here this afternoon, Mr Francois. Your views on Brexit are very well um, documented, but is there anything with two days to go uh, that the Prime Minister could do or say that would change your position? No, and perhaps I could explain to your viewers why. What we will vote on on Tuesday is a draft international treaty. This is my well-thumbed copy of it. And that's why it's called the meaningful vote. Will the House of Commons, in principle, approve this treaty or not? Now, because it's a treaty, it is what's called higher law. So it overrides any motion of the House of Commons, and it even overrides an act of Parliament. And it says specifically in Article 4 of this treaty that if, if there's a clash between this and an act of Parliament, this is superior. So if we, if we agree to this, we're bound pretty much forever in international law. And what will probably happen tomorrow is that the EU, on the eve of the vote, after two and a half years, will miraculously produce a letter which appears to give some guarantees about this treaty and how it would operate, particularly around something called the backstop which is one of the most controversial, but not the only controversial aspects of the treaty. And the government will trumpet this as a fantastic victory. The problem is it will be le legally meaningless. It will not override the treaty, but the government will try and pretend that in some way it does to convince my colleagues that we should vote for it. So what I'm doing here is I'm whistleblowing on the government plan and the fatal flaw in the plan is that that letter will be a love letter if you like it'll be well intended but legally it will be meaningless so if you've seen through them what happens when the prime minister is defeated well let, let me just tell you what else i think will happen before tuesday and then i'll come on to that to coincide with this letter by pure coincidence tomorrow a group of ambitious conservative backbenchers will table an amendment in the House of Commons that is linked to the letter. And the government will then probably try and encourage MPs to vote for this amendment at the last minute. I was the operations officer in the Whip's office a few years ago for two years, so I know how they work. And it's sometimes known in Whip's world as a lifeboat amendment. So in other words, you say to your colleagues, look, the ship is sinking, we're in a desperate situation, everybody jump in the lifeboat and that will save us. Except that the lifeboat, if you like, will be full of holes because the amendment would only be a motion of the House of Commons which does not actually have any real control over this because it's an international treaty. So we'll get the letter from the EU, we'll probably get the lifeboat amendment, the government want this all appear to, as if it's all happened by coincidence, and then they, the whips will run round all my colleagues at the last moment saying you must jump in the lifeboat and you must vote for the Prime Minister's deal. And our, our heads don't button up at the back, we've seen this coming and we're not going to fall for it. And what about if the European Union was to give more reassurances to uh, members of Parliament with regards to the, the issue of the, the, the backstop? I mean, that would be a game changer, would it not? Because there would be a lot of MPs who would say, look, you know, we don't like what the Prime Minister is saying, but the European Union that have come to us has given us more uh, reassurances, no, but, but uh, it, and it, that it, for it, now it, would be good enough for us. No, it's not a game changer because the letter will in no way override the treaty. It, it's a con. The only thing that would count, because it's a treaty, because it's international law, the only thing that would matter is if you change the wording of the treaty itself. Just adding a love letter doesn't change the treaty. The only thing in law, and we've had experts crawl all over this for months, the only thing that would matter okay. in law is if you change the treaty, and that won't do that. So nothing really has changed. So if the Prime Minister's and, and plan the other is thing, doomed, sorry. Mr Fronto, if the Prime Minister's plan is doomed, what happens when it's defeated? What happens next? Well, I'll come on to that. But, but the, the critical thing is, 
Well, Here you can, if we can come up to it now, so what is critical? We want to know what is going to happen next moving forward. If you're saying well, that I, the Prime believe... Minister's plan is doomed and other Brexiteers are saying that, yeah. what, where does the country go to after that? OK, where, I, I do believe it will be defeated. What we want is a free trade agreement called Super Canada because it's based on an existing EU-Canadian free trade agreement that the EU signed with Canada in 2016. So there is an existing framework that the EU have already previously approved. And Even that though we've been told that's not going to happen by the Prime Minister. Well, but the Prime, you're saying to me what happens if she loses, what do we do next? So if she loses, her plan is gone, so then we've got to do something else. And what I'm saying is what we want is Super Canada. We are prepared to go for no deal temporarily to get to Super Canada, but no deal is not what we want. That's not our desired outcome. Our desired outcome is Super Canada because under that we can trade with all the EU like Canada do, but we're not in the single market, we're not in the customs union, so we keep with the Conservative manifesto. That sounds like a huge gamble, though, does it not? That sounds like a no, huge gamble. Not, what, what happens if we go to, into no, no deal no, by no, accident? No, no I'm, I'm, you've asked me very clearly, what should we do? And I'm trying to explain in plain English what we should do. And the other good thing about Super Canada is, is that we're completely without the influence of the ECJ. So we will genuinely have left the European Union we will have honoured the referendum that 17.4 million people voted for. We as MPs will have kept our word to the British people and that is far better than going for this despicable stitch-up between the EU and the government, which they're going to try and parade tomorrow as a great victory when in actual fact it's a capitulation. So in order to get this um, Super Canada to start deal, we go into no deal on a temporary basis. Essentially, that's what you're saying? Yes. And, and what happens if the European Union the work, doesn't budge on that and then well, it, it is no deal? Well, well, just, just, if you give me a chance to explain, I'll, I'll do my best. A lot of the work on this free trade agreement has already been done in Dexu. When David Davis was the Secretary of State, they spent two years working up a legal text akin to Super Canada. And that's what he planned to give the Cabinet at Chequers. But the white papers were switched at the last minute. David Davis's plan was dropped. And instead, we had a plan drawn up by Ollie Robbins and very pro-EU civil servants in Number 10 and the Cabinet Office who don't want us to leave the EU. And this means we don't. We remain basically half in and half out. So the white papers were switched at the last minute and the cabinet were bounced. They weren't allowed to look at both options, debate the merits and then choose which one they thought was best. The whole thing was a stitch up. The Super Canada type plan was dropped because the civil servants didn't want it. And they came up with checkers, which is essentially what this derives from. So the British people were conned. They were completely conned. And there is a way out of this dilemma, and it's called Super Canada. And Donald Tusk and even Michael Barnier are on the record as saying they would favour a comprehensive free trade arrangement with the United Kingdom. So even these key people in the EU have said in principle they would favour something like this. That is the way out of the dilemma. If the Prime Minister loses on Tuesday, which is uh, you know, the expectation um, at, at the moment, um, is she the right person to continue the negotiations? Well, um, let's see what the margin of defeat is. I believe the government will lose. I think the only question is, by how many? If she's overwhelmingly defeated, then I think it's difficult to go back to the EU and then come back to the Commons and they say sort of one more heave, you know, we'll get it over the try line. If it's clear that the House of Commons completely rejects the whole concept of this, then we obviously need to do something else. And I believe that a free trade agreement 
between ourselves and the EU, allowing us to trade for the mutual benefit of both parties, because we're historically free traders as a nation, would be the way out of this problem. And we will be laying out in the next few days exactly how that would work in practice. Okay, Mark Franz, we'll just have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.